Good morning, church family. This morning's scripture reading, as you see behind me, will be from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. And if it's okay with Mark, I'd like to back up to 14 through 17, if I'm not going to steal your thunder on that. So if you have your Bibles out, we'll start in verse 14. You, however, continue in things you have learned and become convicted of, knowing that from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Good morning once again. No thunder stolen. That's not my thunder. That's God's thunder. And uh, it, is, it is great to be here. Had a busy week. I know that many of you have as well. Mothers, thank you. Thank you very much. Happy Mother's Day to you. The lesson today is not a, a Mother's Day sermon, but it certainly um, is about mothers and their influence. We have a... Um, a blessed opportunity with our children for a short period of time to make a difference. And our mothers, while the father's responsibility is given in scripture, our mothers spend more time with our children than the fathers do typically. And their influence continues on for generations. And we're so thankful for our moms. I know I'm thankful for mine. I'm thankful for her mom. Uh, her mom is one of the reasons that I'm doing what I'm doing today. And her influence continues. Every time I stand up and teach or preach or have a Bible study, her influence is continuing, though she's been in eternity since 1993. Um, influence is an important thing, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Would you pray with me, please? Holy Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us and for the blessings that are ours. And Father, we ask you to go with us as we look into another portion of your word may we do this father with open hearts and open minds looking forward to a message from you and the influence that that brings in our lives may we share that with others father in jesus name amen let me ask you a question who is the greatest influence on your children is it a sports star like lebron james because to some people, that's the biggest influence they have in their life. Maybe it's a celebrity like Ellen. Maybe she's a great influence on your children. Leonardo DiCaprio. Actors and actresses can be very influential. Or artists, singers like Pink can be very influential. And I'm not saying that these people can't do some good with their influence, but folks, if that's who the primary influence is in your children's life, you have failed as a parent. Didn't even get one amen, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, there's some guilty feeling people out there, I guess. Because I'm going to tell you that there are some really good people who can be influences in your lives. And there are some others that if we delegate that influence to, we will find ourselves one day not knowing our children and them not knowing our Lord. We must be very careful. We had a devotional in our book from our sister, Linda Collins, and we're grateful for that. And the lesson today is taken from her devotional. And... She, she titled hers, My Legacy of Influence, and our lesson today is A Legacy of Influence. The first part of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, and as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois 
and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Did Paul know the legacy of influence present in Timothy's life? He certainly did, and he even expresses it at the opening of this that we know as his last writing. It's the last preserved writing that we have, the last inspired writing that we have of his just prior to his execution. And he is declaring to Timothy that I knew your mother I knew your grandmother, I know the influence that they had in your life, I know the faith that they had, and I know that that faith is dwelling in you. We often talk about it, faith not being inherited, and, and I believe that. I don't believe that my children can have my faith, but they can learn from my faith and see my faith and develop their faith. So can those round about us, not just our children. And while the instruction that we're going to receive from God's Word today may be more geared towards parents, this lesson is for every person that desires to be influential in another person's life. Because the pattern is the same. This legacy of influence. Lois and Eunice. I want you to look at this phrase, genuine faith. A sincere faith faith genuine if you've been around christians long enough you have known people whose faith was not genuine you can tell by the way they live you can tell by uh what they say with their mouth but what their actions betray because quite frankly we know that if our actions and our words don't match one another that people are usually going to believe the worst of the two. And I can claim that I am a rooster and I am strutting around in the yard taking care of all of the chickens in the yard and I can claim that till the day I die but when you look at me you're not going to see a rooster you're going to see a human being. My actions in my life betray my words and it is the same with our influence our influence has to originate with a genuine faith it's one thing to know all the right answers it's another thing to live those answers and i have known plenty of christians and perhaps you have too that knew all the right answers but they they didn't know what love was they they did not know how to share that in a positive way Parents, and in particular mothers and perhaps grandmothers, are in a critical position in the developing children in our lives. They're in a critical position to influence with a genuine faith beyond what any other person can, simply because by their exposure to the children and the time that they spend with them. This genuine faith dwelt In other words, it made its home in them. And when that faith makes its home in us, we can't help but show our genuine faith. We can't help but live in a particular way that is different from the way that the world lives. I don't know the heart of LeBron James or Ellen or Leonardo DiCaprio or Pink. I do not know their hearts. And I know they have broad influence not only in our society, but around the world because of their station that they have. I also know that every person is capable of doing good and every person is capable of doing bad. But we want to talk about influence with regard to spiritual matters today. I do not want LeBron James, nor Ellen, nor Leonardo DiCaprio, nor Pink, nor any other person in that position being the spiritual influence, especially the primary spiritual influence in my children's lives.
I'm going to go off script. I know, Ken, you've done that before. Anybody that's preached has. Before I get into the rest of the lesson, I want to talk to you about something. All right, this is Mark. Okay? When, when you're trying to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and Sunday dinner is had, and, and you have roast preacher and elders for dessert, your influence is not going to be positive. If you've got something that I need to know about, you come talk to me. Don't talk to your kids about it. Okay? Come talk to me about it. Let's work it out. Okay? If I, if I said something, or I quoted something wrong, or I misspoke, or you disagree with something, I say, come talk to me. Don't talk to your kids about it over lunch. Don't talk to it. Don't talk to your wife or your husband about it in the car on the way home. Your kids are hearing and absorbing everything that you say. If you're going to be the spiritual influence for your kids, you've got to hold up things. I can remember as a child, it, maybe even to an unhealthy level, thinking the preacher was, you know, super great. You know why? Because my parents made it that way. And, and we need to understand that our preachers are human beings just like us because I certainly have my flaws. But if we are constantly berating programs and the people running those programs and the teachers and the preacher and the elders around our children, we shouldn't be surprised when they turn 18 years old that we can't get them back to church. Because we're going to influence our children one way or the other. Back to script. Lois and Eunice. Folks, I don't know a whole lot about Lois and Eunice, but you know what I do know? I know that they had a genuine faith that dwelt in their lives and that they had a strong influence on Timothy, who plays a prominent role in the early church. He is busy with the Apostle Paul. He has his shortcomings too, just like I do. But he is an influential person because he was influenced positively by his mother and his grandmother. And it made a difference in his life. And you know, every person that you come in contact with, you are influencing with the same influence that you have received in your life. And they were, through him, sharing with others. Their faith had been passed on, as it were, to Timothy. Yes, he had developed his own faith, but they had helped him to grow and to learn. From our scripture reading a few moments ago, and yes, Joel, I was going to get to those two verses anyway, so thank you for reading those for us. And, and thank you for all the capable things you do for the church. There's a certain lady sitting over here that is your Lois. Your sister Margie. For those that don't know, Margie Thorpe's grandson is the one who read the scripture here today. And Margie Thorpe was just a baby in her parents' arms when they established the church in Tuwala. What, like, was it 30 years ago? 35 years ago. And, and here's a perfect example right here. Perfect example. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work from childhood. Folks, you know why we have Bible classes for our children? Not so you can drop your kids off and they can learn the Bible. It's so they, you, they can be reinforced in what you're teaching them already at home. Now, that may come as a shock to some of you. But I'm going to tell you that the teacher in your children's Bible class is not the person who should be growing your children spiritually. 
They should be uh, assisting you in growing your children spiritually. From a childhood, you have known these things that are able to make you wise. This This is, oh boy. This is the kind of thing that that we miss. We miss this. And we have games, and we have sports, and we have Disney videos, and we have all of these things that are influencing our children, and we never get around to sharing God's word with them. And then we're shocked one day that our children are not faithful Christians. We need to leave a legacy of influence in our children's lives. And it starts with the scriptures. It starts with the word. And those of us who grew up in a faithful situation in our houses probably can remember having the Bible read to us or us reading the Bible with our our parents around. You, You notice the picture. They're not reading the encyclopedia in that picture. That family is sitting there reading the Bible together. They're sharing in that together. I can remember as a child that every night before we went to bed, we would, my brother and I were 16 months apart, would take turns reading the Bible with our parents sitting on the side of our bed. I remember that. These scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation. Well, why isn't my child coming to church anymore? Why isn't my child faithful in the church? Why, 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 why have we started where we need to start? Folks, and I'm going to tell you, in every family that has one child or 11 kids, bless your hearts, 11 children, Steve. Woo! Every family is going to have a child that will be raised right well, not every family does, but th- they raise their children the way that they should, and some of those families are going to have kids that decide anyway to go somewhere else. Okay? Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is grown, he will not depart from it, is a principle. It is not a hard and fast rule. I have seen it. I have seen a family with four children all raised identically, and one of them strays as an adult. Because free will kicks in and they make a decision. However, that does not excuse us from laying that firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ and the scriptures in their life, so that they have the opportunity to develop that genuine faith. We are responsible for that. They are responsible with what they do with it when they mature. That's the difference. And it is profitable to make us complete, lacking nothing. Verse 16, profitable for doctrine, religious teaching, for reproof, that is to prove these things time and again, for correction, to when we go astray, to bring us back, and instruction in righteousness, living rightly before God. These are the things that are found within the Holy Scriptures. Got a slide in there twice. There we go. Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 4. If, you, if you're a, uh, a parent, you really like those first three verses. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. I heard somebody explain verse 3 one time as if you don't obey your parents, they'll kill you. Hopefully that's not the case. But we love that part of it, but we kind of just breeze right by verse 4, don't we? Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Some of the older versions say, in the nurture. Nurture. That word has at its root, the rearing of a child. 
Somebody told me one time that you raise crops and you rear children. But we always talk about raising our kids, don't we? But this rearing, it, it is nurturing them along, helping to grow and mature them. Admonition is instruction. So we nurture them as a parent, but we also instruct them in the Lord to bring them up. How do we do this? The first thing, we need to be praying with our children. Can you imagine Lois and Eunice not ever having prayer with their young son, grandson? Praying with your children. Helping them to learn from that. Pray with them, but also pray for them. Pray for them. You know, you don't pray for them when all of a sudden they've made about 20 bad decisions and they're sitting over in the detention center. You start praying for them even while they're in the womb. And if you're not in the habit of that, start today. You can never start soon enough. Be involved in church activities with your children. There are so many things that are available. We have a thing called Friday Night Alive for the teenagers. We have Bible Bowl that we're actually going to be hosting this year, where they go through a book. Mark, it's Exodus, is that correct? Exodus is going to be the book this year. We have vacation Bible school. We have Bible classes. And Jimmy does a great job of making sure we've got good teachers in our Bible classes. He has helped put together a new curriculum uh, with the elders' help, and they've gone together and, and tried to get a, a curriculum together that through the course, if they start when they're, they're first born and get into Bible class through 18, they're going to go through the Bible three times, three times in 18 years. Involve your children in these activities. Some of the activities are fun, and they're group building, but it also gives them influence from like-minded people, the adults as well as their peers. Involve them in, in the life of the church. And study God's word with them. Study God's word with them. Help them to see that which makes them complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Help them to see that which from a childhood can make them wise unto salvation. That you must continue in those things. That you have been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. Where had Timothy learned them? From a grandmother and a mother that loved him enough to teach him the truth. Let's love our children enough to teach them the truth. Let's love our parents enough to encourage them to do these things. Let's love them enough to help them, to provide opportunities for them. If, if you have parents that, that you Keep their kids for whatever reason, maybe so they can have a date night and get away for, you know, for a little bit of adult sanity time. And you keep them. Encourage those children that you're keeping in a positive way. Encourage them to understand that God loves them and that the church is there for them because God loves them and wants to provide for them. It is so important for us, every single person in the body of Christ, to be an influence over the young people in our Christian community. And as new children come our way, either by birth or by coming through the door with their parents or with their friends, let's encourage them, let's love them, let's teach them, and let's help them to grow and develop a genuine faith that it may dwell with them and that they may be made wise unto salvation.
pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we know how difficult it is to raise children. We know there's so many things that are tearing at us, whether our jobs or relationships, hobbies, entertainment, whatever it may be, Father. Instill within us the desire to be the main influence in our children's lives and set those things aside for ourselves and show our children there's a better way. Help us to lead them in the paths of righteousness through your precious word, to be the positive influence that we can be and to show them what it is that truly should influence their lives, your scriptures. Help us also to help those parents, Father, who may be struggling, who may be by themselves. Help us to encourage them Strengthen us to do the things that we can do to lighten their load, to bear their burden. For all of our parents, for all of our children, and for all of our members, Father, help us because we cannot do it without you. Strengthen us so that not only we may grow but we may be an influence to those who are, do not know you through your precious Son and the forgiveness of your sins. Bless us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I don't know what is happening in your life, but I know that in a crowd this size that we have people who are struggling, struggling with health, struggling with finances, struggling with relationships, maybe struggling with sin. I don't know. We stand ready to pray with you and pray for you and encourage you this morning. We want to help you however it is that we can. We're about to sing a song, and during this song, if you would come forward, we'd be happy to encourage you in that way. Or maybe you're here and, and you have never named the name of Christ. You've never put him on in baptism. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Are you willing to turn from the sins in your life through repentance, confess his beautiful name, that he is Lord, and to be baptized for the remission of your sins, being buried in water, being raised to walk in a new life, a forgiven life, a life whereby now you have the benefit of the blood of Christ and you are a spiritual child of God. Can we help you with that as well? Whatever your need is today, please don't hesitate. Won't you come as together we stand and sing?